what a finale and I have to say we have some uh, musicians in the studio jamming along with that as well too and it's sounding really really good okay Alison McGrath is live in studio with me here as our Dermot on the guitar and Gareth on bass I have a feeling this is going to be an absolutely cracking night give you a wee sample of uh, what you're going to be listening to this is taken from Alison's brand new album it's called Overboard and uh, well, the album's called Overboard the track we're going to play is one called Fabulous Friend uh, a little bit of information now from the PR and it does tell us a little bit about this particular tune and uh, what it says here just to give you a little bit of a uh, tantalizing tease before we play it. It says, uh, where are you, or where were you, my fabulous friend, when I needed you? That's the lyric, or one of the lyrics, should I say. And uh, the PR says, this song is full of passion. No more secrets, no more lying. Tell you what, folks, make up your own mind. Alison is live in studio with me, and we'll be playing here in just a moment. And, of course, the CD player has laid down. Isn't that the way it goes? <laughs> Great stuff. Okay, so this is the bit now where I try frantically to cover this up. Put the CD player in there. And, uh, <clears throat> yes, okay. And, uh, don't, don't worry about this, folks. This, this happens. It only ever happens to me, but it does, it does happen. No, seriously, here we go. You know I 
taken from the album Overboard, my uh, featured unsigned artist on the uh, program this evening. Indeed, Alison McGrath. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song. Cracking album, and you can just feel the texture in that album. It's absolutely wonderful. Well, I'm very glad to have Alison in studio. Alison, you're very welcome to the Shoebox on your FM. How's <laughs> it's, you? It's great to be here. It's a wonder we all were able to fit in with our instruments. It's, <laughs> it's just as well we didn't take the drummer with us. Absolutely. Know? He would have been playing out in the hallway, I think. <laughs> Well, you have brought a couple of guys with you, and uh, they are Dermot and Gareth. How's it going, guys? How's it going, Good stuff, good stuff. So uh, these guys are supplying the music along with yourself here tonight, and this this is part of your regular band? Yes, it is indeed. The um, fabulous Dermot McQuaid, who a lot of people around here would know, and uh, Gareth Hughes, and uh, the two guys. But there's, there's a lot of other people that have been involved in the album, and... Uh, they obviously couldn't fit in here the night either, so. <laughs> so how many's in the band total? Um, well, there's a core of four of us, and then we supplement it depending on what we're doing. Um, but at any one time, there could even be nine on stage, you know. As big a band as yeah. that? Okay. And what, what would that entail? Is that like a brass section? Yeah, we bring brass like section in, yeah. Right, okay. And that's sort of the genre there we're leaning towards. Um, we're leaning towards a, a blues soul, more of a sort of a soul type sound, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's blues So There's a little bit of jazz, um, a little bit of rock in there as well. It's sort of nearly a combination of a lot of my influences, really, mm-hmm. you know, which can't, which are very varied. They're not sort of cast in stone in one particular genre. Like. OK, well, we've got a little bit of the flavour of yourself and a little bit of the flavour of the band. Alison, tell us about yourself, OK? First of all, where do you come from and how did you get into music? Where did it start? I um, started at the age of about, I suppose, three or four when I started just singing around the place and entertaining all the family and moved through singing in uh, uh, faces and school choirs, then had a few leading roles in school musicals and then I went to college in Belfast and I just got a guitar, which I couldn't really tune and couldn't really play, but... I figured out two or three chords and went out busking. Mm-hmm. And from there, I started meeting other musicians mm-hmm. and basically taught myself guitar by watching other people and, and, and learned by eye and by ear as opposed to reading music. I don't read music. Mm-hmm. And from that, that was really where it all sort of kicked off, really, when I was out busking and, and meeting other musicians. And because I had a very limited skills in the guitar and only could play two chords, I started making up my own so- songs. Mm-hmm. There's loads of two chord songs from years and years ago um, and that's then how the writing started. So, so not, not a cheeky here but what age were you when you decided to go out and start busking? Um, it was 17, 18. Right, okay. So what was that like? Initially was it a daunting experience or or was it uh, just No, I was, I was doing it for the laugh. I was just... <laughs> I was just like, it wasn't for the dinner money and the bus fare home then? Well, right? it was maybe to go to the pub after <laughs> college, you know. Um, so... You know what, I really enjoyed it and I met so many fabulous people on the streets of Belfast um, from other buskers to, I suppose you would call them people chancing their arm, you know. Uh-huh. Um, Pull a moose, I think they call it around well, Belfast. Well, you know, <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but um, I did meet some fabulous people and um, seen a lot of kindness from people and... You also seen bad things as well, oh, but honestly, yeah. you know it was a great experience, and I would never change mm-hmm. it for the world. So where did you go on the street to bus? You know, t- city t- centre, t- right? Typically shop doorways, or yeah, yeah. In, in the square, or anywhere till we could get a pitch. You always had to avoid the, the other busker. Uh-huh. That he had his own amp and he had everything amplified. And because yes. I only had an acoustic guitar, if I seen him, I would go right. Well, I'm away to the other end of the. Street, yeah, <laughs> because he's gonna drown me out. Right, okay. But uh, what about duets? Did they ever occur? Oh yes, all the time. Oh yeah, uh-huh, yeah there uh-huh. was there was some great, great things that happened. But well, we did um, a guitar player called Dingus McGee, actually from Newton Hamilton, but lives in Belfast. He played with me, um, and we did um, on the Lord Lord Mayor's day. We did. The Belfast Busker of the Year competition, and I ended up winning it, and ended up going to um, Downtown Radio with mm-hmm. Tommy Sands. Right, okay. But that was another co- collaboration, shall we say? You know, brief, okay. brief. 
<laughs> so that was basically your baptism of fire, I suppose, as to play in live to a crowd, whether they wanted to hear you or not at that time, but that was basically, this was your first sort of live experience, really? Well, not really, because I sang in front of about uh, five, six, seven hundred people uh-huh. when I was doing school musicals. Uh, but I mean, um, as, what I mean is taking your own music on the street and oh, going yeah. out and doing that. So that was really, from that perspective, Yeah. and it just, you know, it was a breeze for you. It was just out there and do this and this is crack, this is good fun. Oh, I was having fun. I don't know when it, whether the people walking by were having fun <laughs> or just feeling, you know, pity for okay, me. Okay, I want to take you back to the, to the to back to the early years again, the school musicals and that kind of thing, but we'll do that in a few minutes' time. I'll tell you what I want to do to take us up to a commercial break. I'd like to hear one of your tunes played acoustically now here live in the studio. And the guys are here just to say Dermot's on guitar along with you and uh, Gareth here is on bass guitar as well. And uh, obviously Alison's playing uh, rhythm guitar here too. So, um, what are you going to do for us? Uh, this is a song called Just Because. Just Because.
Ah oh, man, that was sweet. Absolutely. Don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be right back. Stay tuned to 101.4 Yuri's Your FM. Yuri City's Your FM. Well, you're very welcome back. It's uh, 12 minutes away from the hour of... 12 minutes away from the hour of 8 o'clock. A very, very, very good evening to you. You're tuned to The Shoebox with yours truly, Jerry Martin, here on your FM 101.4. Live in studio with me is a local singer-songwriter, award-singing songwriter, uh, Alison McGrath. And we've been having a bit of a chat, and she's been playing uh, a tune for us indeed. You just heard before the break a track called Just Because, live unplugged here in studio. On guitar alongside her is Dermot, and on bass guitar is Gareth. And I can tell you, I don't know what it sounds like to you guys out there in the ether of Radio Land, but in this studio, it just sounds absolutely magical, I can tell you. Anyway, Alison, we were chatting before the break about how you get into the whole music scene, and indeed from the, uh, the early age of been singing through school and uh, the musicals, and then... Uh, college years and going out and busking and stuff like that there uh, there must have been uh, a sort of a progression then from that point where you were going out and taking this as a uh, literally a bit of crack on the street and playing and busking to a point where you thought to yourself hold on a second here I could go out and sort of um, do this in bars and clubs and maybe bigger venues as the opportunity arises where did that sort of uh, transition occur? Uh, well a lot of uh, I suppose singer songwriter um, nights Mm-hmm. You know, open mic nights, things like that. Um, doing guest appearances with bands, um, and then I I joined a band, seen an advert in the Belfast Telegraph. Uh, they were looking for a lead singer, and I went. And at that particular time, I had, um, it was it was for a blues band. Okay. And that time, I had my head shaved. Um, I had a Mohican. Right. Okay. You were sort of more the stiff little fingers so, and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> I went for the audition with this blues band, so I wore this whole big scarf affair on, on my head. <laughs> <laughs> and I went for the um, audition, and the audition went really well. And they said, well, look, and I still had the, and it was really good because the audition was in this big, big shed, and it was freezing cold, so I'd no, you know, it was an excuse to keep the head scarf on. <laughs> <laughs> so then we all went to the pub afterwards, and they said, right, we want to offer you the position of mm-hmm. singer, and... I said, right, and I pulled the scarf off. Mm -hmm. And one of the locals in the pub turned around and said to me, he says, you must have been a bold girl. And I says, why? He says, when were you tarred and feathered? (laughs) (laughs) Very good, very good. So so I had to to let the hair grow um, Uh and wear headscarves for the period in the blues band in Belfast. Okay, well, was... At that point, what kind of genre of music were you doing? writing? Was it blues oriented uh, yourself? Uh, no, no uh, not and who that. who were your musical influences at that stage? See, there's so many. Like we would be here all night. Um, <clears throat> I like, um, like. But at that point in your life, you know, who who would you been leaning more towards? Well, there was like Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, uh, Neil Young, um, John Martin, mm-hmm. people like that around that sort of era. Right. Um, you're sort of moving from the acoustic to the rock sort of side of things. There, there actually wasn't a lot of blues in it, to be honest. Uh-huh. Um, but then when I joined the blues band, then it sort of became that the blues influence then got into my music and then songs, new songs came from that mm-hmm. sort of. Okay, and would that sort of led you along once you discovered sort of the new artists and the blues and obviously into the soul end of things then, then yeah. too? I mean, would that have opened new doors for you musically in your own creative writing and stuff like that? Absolutely. It's always good to get a, a new perspective and new signs and new influences. Um, because if you're, if you're constantly listening to the same type of music, that's, that's where you, you're going to write, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's good to get a little bit of everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, so based, okay, you got the job with the Blues Band. Um, obviously, there was rehearsals and there was a gig coming up in the foreseeable future. Yeah, we, we played uh, mostly down the Rotterdam Bar in Belfast. I know it well. I used to play there too. Um, <laughs> and we had a residency in there for a couple of years. Uh-huh. And then I decided, I moved back from Belfast to Warren Point, where I'm from. And I decided to go back to college again and do something else. So uh-huh. the band split up pretty much. Right, how long did the band stay together for? Well, about three years. Right, okay. All blues covers or any originals oh, in no, there? Oh, it wasn't just blues. We did, uh, it started off as a blues band and uh-huh. then with different people coming and going and we ended up doing lots of different stuff, mm-hmm. like from rock to even Latin music. Right. Um, it was jazz, 
Um, well, the Rotterdam was a fantastic venue for showcasing mm-hmm. talent. It was really, really was. I remember actually going down. Well, we used to play in it too. I was at a band from the Sins many years ago. I remember one night going in and Kieran Goss was there. Mm. And uh, it was just, oh, it was Kieran Goss. You know, but at that time, like, I mean, it was just, you know, it was just so much talent moving through those doors. It was fantastic, you know. But anyway, as I say, you had a residency down there. And as the band changed, did that, you know, the, the members coming and going, did the influences change? Did the fans that were coming to see you? Did uh, they stay no, with no, you? No, no, it seemed to um, have the same regular crowd. That mm-hmm. I think it was the fact that we were starting to do a lot of different stuff. Um, and the guys in the band at the time were interested in, in doing my original songs as well, mm-hmm. um, which we did and attempted to record many years ago. But sort of, I just didn't have the mindset at the time to settle and, and do the recording and take that, taking the recording end of it seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, which I actually regret, you know, because now that I've got into doing recording um, and learnt the whole recording process, um, you know, it's, I think over the time it's been wasted, Like, but we'll, we'll be doing some more. Okay, and uh, <laughs> at the end of the day, you know, I mean, you've got an album at the minute with nine tracks on it. Okay, there must be a wealth of back material there, though, that you've written over the years. Well, we've enough for another album, and then there's... Um, there's a lot of old material that sort of was put to one side as well. Um, mm. And recently, in the past four months, I've wrote another five songs. I just seem to have wee spurts. <laughs> just creative spells yeah. where the, the windows are closed and the shutters yeah. are pulled and the doors is locked and that's it and just get on with it. Mm. Okay, and, and when you're writing a song, where do you start? How do you begin? Is it the melody? Is it the, the it's lyrics? It's usually like a melody. Um, and... Just words and things, maybe you know, experiences and mm-hmm. um, things that you. I keep keep saying this, and people laugh at me, but you know, you pay to go to see a psychiatrist. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. I just write about stuff, um, and that's where the songs come from. But then I, you know, I also write songs that are based um, on hypothetical situations, you know, mm-hmm. um, scenarios that don't exist. Mm-hmm. It's really up to the listener to interpret it how they want. Okay, well it's come from somewhere within your own mind and it just yeah. f- flows and comes together. Okay, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take another track from the actual album to take us to the news but, uh, just for time and purposes. So uh, what we're going to do is going to take one uh, entitled Over That Hill. Tell us a little bit about that particular track before we play it here. Um, well, we recorded, there was quite a, a wealthy musicians played in that. We had uh, a guy called Stevie Clark. Mm-hmm. Berlin saxophone player, he played saxophone on it. We had Peter Benson, plays keyboards. Um, Colm Hardy from Donegal, he lives in Donegal now. Um, and who else was on it? Myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll take a little listen to it. Uh, it's taken from your album, Overboard. This is Alison McGrath taking us up to the news at 8 o'clock with a track entitled Over That Hill. Show me has a lot. 
like you took on me FM.com and live on FM 101.4 from Newry. This is your FM News Update. Your FM, your community, your station. Well, you're very, very welcome back. It is the Shoebox here on your FM with yours truly, Jerry Martin, keeping you company. The time's just gone five minutes after the hour of eight o'clock. Live in studio with me, it's a local singer-songwriter, Alison McGrath, accompanied by Dermot on guitar and Gareth on bass. And I can tell you we're having some absolutely cracking tunes live in studio here on Plugged. And we're going to have another quick chat here with the lady herself. Alison, uh, again, welcome back to the uh, to the programme here. OK, we were chatting before the news about... Um, Basically, your first band. If, if I'm assuming that was your actual first band. Uh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. What, what were they called? Captain Swing. Captain Swing, cracking name too, wasn't it? I suppose. And um, after the, okay, you moved back and the band broke up and whatnot. What did you do then? Um, generally, just <clears throat> played jamming with friends, you know. And then I met Dermot, and uh, we started doing the odd wee two piece thing here and there. Mm-hmm. And then I decided about six years ago that it was a, now was the time to record. Mm-hmm. So I approached um, Gareth and Carl Hughes, who plays drums, and Colm Hardy, and they were the core of the band. Mm-hmm. And then we had Jarlath Mulholland on saxophone. He joined us and also he played clarinet and again many, many more. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, so you have said that the band is a core a core membership of four in the band, but at certain venues and certain gigs, obviously that uh, that can go up to as, as many as nine on stage. I yeah. think you said. Okay, so what does that entail? Is that a full brass section there? Yeah, we can have anything from trombone, saxophone, trumpet, um, and then we bring in Colm comes down and plays electric guitar as well. Uh huh. So that's more or less it. Okay, so so normally when you're playing, is it all? Is it normally acoustic guitars? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's no, so okay, right, fine. I didn't know that. That's interesting. So you've got an acoustic sound, and obviously you're filling out with the bass, and then you've got the drums. So what, yeah. so what kind of a drum setup are we talking about here? We're talking about brushes, or are we the talking full, about the full kit? Um, on some of the songs, there it's brushes, but mm-hmm. uh, generally it's full kit. Right. Okay. Sounds absolutely good. Um, right. Without further ado, folks, let's do the one. What are you going to play for us now? This is the title track of the album, this is Overboard. Okay, take it away folks. I'm going overboard Now you took my heart away Yes. 
I'm sitting out, I'm bailing out of any way you find me. Worry, 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 I'm sitting out, I'm bailing out of any way you find me. Worry, 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 worry. Exceptional, well done, guys. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful. I, I, I don't want it to stop there. I really don't want it to stop there. Do, do, please do another one. What are we going to have now? Um, this is a song called Swim It Ireland Swim. <clears throat> Won't you 
swim, a darling, swim. I swim, a darling, swim. Please swim, a darling, swim. Magical haunting to say the humble the least, Alison. That was absolutely beautiful. And can I just say, Dermot? Echoes, shadows of Carlos Santana there on the guitar. Nice one, thanks very much. Brilliant stuff. The guys, that sounded fantastic. And the bass, just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stuff. That's just a beautiful, beautiful song. It's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, Alison, you are, uh, well, you're busy. You've been a busy lady. You've been promoting a new album as well, haven't you? Yeah, we've been um, sort of gone from having no gigs to filling up the calendar there, just out promoting. um, Mm. And doing TV, radio, and um, having fun. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about the video. And um, the video we did with Absolute Entertainment Ireland. And mm-hmm. um, we did it in the bathhouse in Uri. It's a lovely, lovely venue, um, which I would, you know, highly recommend for if somebody had some sort of a function or CD launch. Um, it would be fabulous. And um, Absolute Entertainment Ireland were just really really good to work with um they were all so friendly helpful um kind and you know they were hard workers and it, it just it just it worked really well mm-hmm. um and it was good fun to do mm. and that was your first sort of experience of that end of the business was it yeah absolutely right okay mm-hmm. and it's, i suppose it's actually hard work too when you think about it it's not it's just as easy as getting in there and i'm not being sure when this tears please don't think i am as going in and slapping your making up Makeup on and pointing for the cameras. It's not like that at all, sure. It's not. No, no. It's it's a whole new experience. It's it's all new experiences. Um, which I'm grateful to have had. You know, it's all extra bonuses. Like really, all I ever wanted to do was um to record an album and just achieve that. Uh-huh. The fact that you know it's been picked up by different radio stations and um retailers um is a bonus, and then getting the award that we. If, if we got. I want to talk to you about a, a little bit about that. Uh, this was with the music review uh, on Signed Ireland, and um, basically you were nominated for the best in soul category, wasn't it? Yeah, best uh, jazz, best soul, jazz, funk, uh-huh. alternative category. And how did you actually come about to be nominated? How how do you be nominated for something like that? Um, well, it was actually um, I was nominated by. Uh, agent in south of ireland um pauline mcdermott smith of mm-hmm. impact artist promotions and i didn't even know she'd nominated me and <laughs> <laughs> until i've seen my name all over this their web page and uh, the fact then that it was nominated for the category and then there was like 25 were put into the, picked out of all the nominations for each category um and there's 25 or so in my category and it was whittled down then to four and then or five, and then we went down for the award ceremony in Dublin, which was with Kaz. I was on Kaz's bus, Mama Kaz's bus, <laughs> and such it is crack we had. Ah, oh, she's a gas, that lady, she really is. Absolutely, and Johnny. They were in here, I have to say, now, and uh, not to distract away from, from what's going on here now, but they were in here about a week before Christmas, or, or, or it, was, it was the week of the awards anyway, and uh, there wasn't that much music played, and there wasn't that much questions done, we just laughed. Laughed no, the whole time. No, and Johnny's gas. Yeah. yeah. Really is. And he's holding on tight to that hat as well too. Mm-hmm. But that's neither here nor there. Back to this. Tell us a little bit more. You all went down to Dublin, okay? Yeah. And Music Review on, on Signed. Who are they? What are they? It's a magazine that reviews on Signed Music. Okay. In Ireland. Um, and it's, it's just, I think, sort of the, in, the, the lead in their field that co- in Ireland that cover on Signed Bands. Um and they, they, this is their first awards that they're gonna they're gonna do this every year. And there was different sponsors, uh-huh. um, of each category. Um, so fair play to them for putting it together because it was it was great just to get recognition, um, for for what we've done and for what the rest of the guys have done. Okay, so on the night, um, obviously, you're waiting along with everybody else. Your okay. your category comes up and your name's called out. How does that feel? It was like winning the FA Cup final <laughs> and being the main striker right. that scored the goal. That's what it was like. It was tossed up in the air and thrown around. Now, bear in mind, Kaz was on, her category was called out earlier that night. Uh-huh. And, um, of course, she, she won her category and it was 
it was just party on down from there. Um, but then the fact then that, that I got my, won my category then, it was they all celebrated with me and it was such a journey home in the bus, was, let but, me uh, tell you. I was about to say, it would have been some crack in that bus on the way home, all right. So there you, what do you do then? I mean, do you go, you go up onto the stage, you accept the award, you... Say a few words and then okay. get off. Do the whole, the whole Hollywood speech then? Oh, then? yeah. <laughs> okay, super stuff. Well, I'll tell you what, let's take another track, okay? Um, have we got one lined up for us here or will we go to the CD? Um, well, we, we need to sw- 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 switch in for our <laughs> instruments. Okay, the, oh, the guys are swapping instruments over here. And uh, what's going to happen now, I do believe, is that uh, Dermot's going to play uh, the bass and Gareth's going to play the guitar. And uh, obviously you do this on stage. Yeah, Light and as, well as you too. can see, it, <coughs> um, Gareth's right-handed and Dermot's left-handed, so Dermot's playing a right-handed bass upside down, <laughs> so just to confuse matters. All adds to the fun. Um, this song is another track of the album. This is a song called One More Moment. Okay, I just wait to make sure the guys are all ready there and we're all happy with the, the setup and everything's looking good. Okay, guys, mic's on, and it's all systems go. Sorry, uh, Alison, what, what, just you want to reintroduce the track again? One more moment. One more moment. There you go again. soul to me is a my little love oh my little love one more moment please before you leave hold me now tonight before you leave before you leave don't My dignity over indulgence is not the word. Oh, it's not the word. One more moment, please, before you leave. Hold me now to. Before you leave, before you leave, don't leave. Oh 
before, before I leave. Don't leave me, I'll leave me. Well, once again, absolutely magical, stone stuff, brilliant guys, absolutely brilliant. Stay tuned to 101.4, Yuri's Your FM. Yuri City's Your FM. Well, you're very, very welcome back. It's your FM. The time is 27 minutes after the hour of 8 o'clock. You're tuned to the Shoebox with yours truly, Jerry Martin. And live in studio, music review unsigned award-winning local artist, Alison McGrath. And we've had some absolutely gorgeous tunes played acoustically live here in studio. A nice little unplugged session. And Alison, of course, has been chatting to us as well. Don't forget, if you'd like to get in touch with the program, you can text the word URFM, that's I-U-R-F-M, followed by your message and your name to 077 66 40 41 42. If there's anything you'd like to ask Alison, send us a text and I'll ask her for you. Absolutely no problem. Also, you can touch, uh, you can get in touch, shall I say, via Facebook. Our page is IUR-FM Nuri. That's IUR-FM Nuri on Facebook. Just like the page. Post your message, and uh, we'll take it from there. Now, as I say, we were chatting uh, with uh, Alison uh, just before the commercial break, and the guys played a song, and uh, it's like uh, musical chairs here, only it's not musical chairs, it's musical guitars, because the guys are swapping basses over and swapping guitars over, and it's all good fun. It's all absolutely good fun. But I'll tell you what we're going to do, we'll have another uh, quick chat here with Alison before we get uh, uh, another tune on the way, because I know there's one coming up, and the guys are... Getting tuned up as well. Okay, uh, Alison, we were talking about the uh, award ceremony down in Dublin. So basically, a lot has happened recently, 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 if you know what I mean, with the album, with the video, with the award ceremony. What's next? Uh, we're just going to concentrate on recording so uh, a second album, really. Okay. When that's, you... that's my priority. We we're supposed to be started in January, but it just quite hasn't quite happened yet. Because mm-hmm. You know, with one thing or another, so okay. How many, tra- how many tracks are we talking about in this particular album? Right? To do ten. Ten this time, yeah. right? Okay. And again, this is a collection of material. Uh, the, the, you said that you wrote what was it? Uh, five tracks in in four months, or was it the other way around? Well, we, well, vaguely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> four years, four or five songs. Right. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything then from from the past yeah, that you yeah, you brought with you? Yeah, there's um, there's a there's a couple of older songs um, from. One actually was from when I was about 17. Right, okay. This so, one maybe you busked with on the street yeah, as well? Yeah, two chord number. Right, good like stuff. Good old two chords. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. If it does the trick, if it does the trick, it's it's well worth the so, doing. So, uh, yeah, some songs are going to be resurrected and maybe just rearranged a wee bit. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we'll get it. We'll get it done. Okay, okay. So, and uh, you have a couple of gigs coming up as well too. We'll talk about those in a moment and you can tell me where they're, they are and just just let the people know. But uh, you're going to do another track for us now. What, 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 do you, what have you got lined up for us this time? This is a song called Turn a Blind Eye. Turn a Blind Eye. Uh, tell us a little bit about it before you start. Uh, you didn't tell me you were going to ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> you slipped that one in. I did. Um, I'm sure everybody's bored of me telling what the song's about, but it's... Um, basically written for the Buddhist monks in Burma when they went in protest about four years ago. Um, and it was all over the media, which was unusual because the, the media is so suppressive, or so suppressed in Burma because of the military government. Um, and they protested for five days. And at that stage, um, George Bush decided he was going to stick his nose in because he had no other option, really, um, mm-hmm. because it was big media rather than choose to ignore it for whatever reason. Um, and that night, after he said, right, we're going to intervene, um, that night all the Buddhist monks disappeared in the monasteries. Um, they, they just completely vanished. Nobody knows where they went. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's talk of concentration camps and work camps um, where they're building a new city, which is going to be for the latest only. So basically it was um, in support. I was so sort of moved by these Buddhist monks, like having a peaceful protest. And like there's the soldiers of the country were, you know, getting violent with them. And then obviously they disappeared. So that's what the song's about. <laughs> 
Okay, let's hear it. Georgie, won't you come out from behind those words you speak? Oh, Georgie, won't you listen? Let the people have the say. Absolutely excellent. Now you do realise I asked you at the start of the song what the song was about and now you know what I'm going to ask now, don't you? Mm -hmm. You do. The reason I asked what the song was about is because I want to know what the piece at the end is. It's a British chant. Okay. Now don't ask me to explain what that's all about because um, I think there's a variation of chants that they use um, um, to reach enlightenment Mm -hmm. and uh, meditation. Okay, it makes sense. Now, obviously, when I heard it for the first time, I had absolutely no idea what that was about. But that's why the bullet was put before the gun there. So, (laughs) obviously, I'm delighted now that I have a little bit of insight into that particular track. A lot of the rest of them have tried to interpret myself for their own different things because I don't like sometimes to, you know, to hear a direct answer to what a song is about. Sometimes I like to try and interpret. But that particular tune, I needed to know. Okay. Okay. So you've no idea what the chant is, but where did you learn the phrasing of it? How did how did you get to know the phrasing of that? Um, I actually um, I've read a bit about Buddhism. Okay. Um, and a, a friend who also was in Buddhism, and 
I went through her. I was going, right, now you've got to teach me how to say this properly because <laughs> right. I'm going to try and sing it, you know. Uh-huh. Um, so that was really how we did it. Okay. Um, just reading up on the theory. Also, we know when that was happening in uh, Burma. I just read a bit of background on Buddhism and, you know, what they believe in and, you know. Okay, no, that's fair enough. That answers the question. Now, when you're writing this, when you see stuff on the news, especially current events, world events now will, will stay sort of in, in, in the mainstream here. Um, do you feel inclined then when you see something that sort of reaches inside you to, to write about that there and then? Or do you feel like an effect coming on over a period of time maybe? Um, or do you feel any sort of... I think it's usually stuff that's in your mind uh-huh. um, that you sort of need to make sense of. Right. And, and that's what it's about, really. Okay. Well, that's fair enough. I mean, again, that answers that question. <laughs> Albeit somewhat evasively, like, but... <laughs> be a good politician, you, but we'll say nothing anyway. Moving swiftly on. Um, when you you get the idea for a song, okay, um, does it flow creatively right away? Is it something that has to go down to paper there and then? Or is it something that you work on over a period of, of time? Maybe you get the basic days? chords, basic lyrics, and... Uh, you know, melody and, and just take it from there. And, it, you know, once you get the core of it down in the first day of, of, of what, what you're hearing and what you're trying to get across, uh-huh. and then as long as they remember it, that's the hard bit because there's lots of stuff that you come out with and then the next day you go, gosh, what was that? Are you one of these people that has to get up in the middle of the night and come downstairs and write down something that you've just no, thought about? No, definitely not. No? No, no, you're not getting me out of my bed. <laughs> Well, fair enough. But when you're writing a song, obviously you've got some sort of a structure in your head at the start. When I say structure, I don't mean that in a rigid uh, sense. What I mean is you've got an idea of what you want to do with a song. Does it always end up sort of in the same context? No. <laughs> <laughs> there's loads of stuff, like even on the album, there's stuff that maybe started out as maybe blues songs and then we turned them into rock songs. Or mm-hmm. it's uh, Everything's open for... But I move adapting and moving about, and Even it's getting to where you want to um, be able to play it with the band, yeah, in a live scenario. So that's really where we're trying to take it from now. That you know the core of the songs will be recorded by the core members of the band, and yeah. then anything else is it is additional. Mm-hmm. Um, so that when you're out gigging, you can play what what's on the CD. <laughs> right. No, that's fair enough. That's, a, that's a, obviously that answers the question too. But I suppose what I'm trying to say is, you have an idea, maybe. Um, literally, emotionally, um, a connection that you have with the idea of the song. Uh, do you stay true to that the whole way through when it comes to the end of the song? Or oh, do you, yeah. Right, absolutely. Yeah. It's a story. A story. You know. Okay. Um, and you want it, you don't want, to me, I, I don't um, be direct in any song. It's it's up to people to interpret. Interpret it, yeah. Because the reason we list, listen to music and we have our favourite songs is because either the words mean something to you, you like the melody, or it reminds you of a time in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the important thing about music is about connecting to people and people being able to, you know, connect connect back with it and get something out of it. Ultimately, I mean, ultimately now, you've told us what, what's in the future, what's in the pipeline as a CD, uh, hopefully another album coming along uh, this year. You know, uh, ultimately, what is it you want from it? I just want to enjoy playing music with wonderful musicians. That's all I care about, really. Well, that's a fair and honest answer. Okay, have you got another one for us? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's another fair and honest answer. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take a, a commercial break, and then when we come back on the flip side of that, we'll actually have another track from the album, and I'll let you introduce that, and then you can tell us a little bit about, about uh, up-and-coming gigs. Is that okay? Brilliant, yeah. Newry City's Your FM. <laughs> Sometimes the body gotta go
Taken from the album Overboard, Alison McGrath. Try called I Never. And of course, Alison live here with me in studio. We've had an absolutely cracking evening here with some great unplugged music from Alison and indeed uh, two members of her band. And uh, well, that was a. <clears throat> And Dermot and uh, Gareth, who were playing uh, acoustic guitar and bass. I was going to say respectively, but the, they sort of swapped halfway through and, and changed instruments, which was uh, intriguing to say nothing but the least here live in the studio. It all happens here. It really does amazing. It was great crack too. Absolutely you great just, crack. You just be great for none of them when this is put out. <laughs> As Gareth sees the clumsy one, you know, there's generally something that he manages to... Oh, well, he hasn't left the, he hasn't left the building yet. That's because we've, <laughs> we've paid him to that chair and he hasn't moved. <laughs> okay, Alison, tell us where people can get your music. Um, you can get my music, um, you can download off Amazon, iTunes, CD Baby. Um, just look up Overboard by Alison McGrath. Okay. Two, two L's. Um, or you can buy in uh, Carlin Records or come along to the gig and pick up a CD. Okay, speaking of gigs, what's happening and where could people in the local area go to see you? Well, this Saturday night we are playing in a all new music club called Dr Hilliard's Music Club and it's in the Hilliard House Hotel in Castle Wellen uh-huh. um, and it's run by a lovely girl called Emma King um, another another musician actually and we're going down there on Saturday night right. I think things kick off about 8 o'clock there's to be a support act um, so we're looking forward it's our first time there we're looking forward to that then we are back in the fabulous Indo Blues Club in Uri uh-huh. uh, on Friday the 25th of January and it's an early kickoff at 7.30. Okay. And it's a great venue. Everybody wants to come along. Okay, well there's two great nights uh, in the not too uh, distant future that people can come along and see you play and uh, uh, the gig in Castle Wellen is at the Core four piece, or will there be more it's members? The, it's the four piece. Four piece, okay. Excellent stuff. Good stuff indeed. And where can people find out more about you if they want to look up you on the internet and find out more about you? Oh, I'm on Facebook. Um, if they just look up Alison McGrath Music on Facebook, they'll find me. Mm-hmm. Uh, Reverb Nation um, or CD Baby. Right. Okay. Well, there you have, folks. You heard it there. All I can say at this stage is Alison and to the guys. Thanks very, very much for coming in. Thank you in. very much for having us in. Ah, it's been my pleasure. It really, really has. It's been an absolute joy to have you here in studio and I've really, really enjoyed it. And uh, you'll keep me up to speed with how things progress, especially with the new album. Yes, yes. Uh, and when you get recorded, you'll come back and talk to me again. You will. Yeah, I don't know how old it'll be then by the time <laughs> I get that one finished. Ah, it'll be good. It'll be good. be a me Zimmer frame. I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure, well, sure I could be a me Zimmer frame in here too. You never know. Not at all. No, you'll have it finished this year, I no, you will. It'll be brilliant. It'll be absolutely brilliant. Okay, folks, there you have it. That was Alison McGraw live in studio here on the shoebox with yours truly, Jerry. Uh, I nearly forgot my own name there, Jerry <laughs> Martin. <laughs> on your FM. Going to take another track from the album, uh, from the album entitled Overboard, and this one's called The Troubles There.
absolutely wonderful stuff. That's the final track from the album Overboard from uh, award-winning artist Alison McGraw. You'll be hearing a lot more of that lady on the Shoebox Show here with yours truly, Jerry Martin, on your FM indeed. Okay, time now. What is it? It's uh, seven and a half minutes away from the hour of uh, nine o'clock. It's just about all I've got time for, I have to say. Where does the time go when you're having fun? Okay, just to remind you, coming your way after the news at 9 o'clock, you can catch up with uh, Matty James and Country Call, some of the very, very best in American country music. Matty will be keeping you company right through until 11 o'clock. I want to say a big thank you too to everybody who texted in on the programme this evening with your uh, messages of support. And uh, good wishes indeed for Alison and for the programme here. And also to those of you who uh, use the uh, Facebook option as well. Many thanks for that also. Just checking through some of the messages here on Facebook. Some great messages of support for Alison and Dave. All good stuff. Okay, as for me, I will be back next Tuesday evening to do it all over again with a brand new shoebox. GM Selection featuring more unsigned music. I have to say, I've got a wealth of material that has come my way, especially since the uh, Christmas break. Doing my very, very best to sort through as much of it as possible. I have to say, there's some absolutely brilliant new young bands on the scene at the moment too. Uh, Really looking forward to featuring some of those guys in the not too distant future. And scheduling in more of your uh, unplugged sessions here on your FM. Incidentally, uh, Chris Keyes, who we featured last week, he'll be with us the first week in March here in studio. Looking forward to that. Uh, He's got a brand new album coming out at the moment and a video too. And that'll be released at the end of February. So we have him here at the start of March. Perfect timing, hey? And don't forget, if you are an unsigned artist, unsigned band, and you'd like to get your music featured here on the uh, Shoebox program with yours truly, drop me a line to your FM. Win Business Park, Newry, that's Win Whiskey India November, W I N. Win Business Park, Newry County Down. Get in touch, get in touch via Facebook, get in touch however you please. Send me a link to your music. And we most definitely get you on the air on the program. Because that's what this show is all about. Promoting unsigned talent. And God knows there is an absolute wealth of it out there that needs to be heard. Okay, I'll be back with you next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. Stand by for Matty James on Country Call coming your way after the news at 9. Until next Tuesday at 7, from yours truly, Jerry Martin. Goodbye, take care, God bless. I'm going to leave you with a track, uh, which was a hit originally for Status Quo, which I believe back in the 60s. This is an American band called Camper Van Beethoven from the 1980s. This is their rendition of that classic tune. Okay, talk to you next week. Until then, take care. Bye-bye. See ya.